Hello, Rodika, and welcome to Skills for Mars Transitions. I am really, really happy to be hosting you, and I'm looking forward to hearing your amazing story. Thank you, Julia, and great to be here at Skills for Mars. It's a great initiative, um, and uh, I'm looking forward to see how my my story would would contribute to to the listeners, and probably they can get also some ideas of uh, the things was uh, doing uh, or gone through that would uh, encourage them or support them in the process. Oh, for for sure they will, uh, especially because you had some really crazy changes and some really some tryouts and some experiments that very few people do in their life. So I'm looking forward to this discussion. Can you, before anything, uh, introduce yourself and take us a bit through your journey, through your life journey? My life journey, let's start with the professional one. <laughs> Probably that will be more of interest. Uh, so uh, yes, I started uh, my career as an accountant. Um, Basically, my mother said, do you want to be an accountant or do you want to be a teacher? You have to have a job after you finish the high school. So I said, none of those. <laughs> but, uh, eventually, she signed me up to the economics high school. So uh, for um, seven, eight years, I've um, been um, doing um, the accountancy type of jobs. In the parallel of uh, having an accountant job, uh, I also had my own little company in providing accounting um, services uh, for small companies. Um, at some point, I got to um, the realization that and acceptance that really accounting is not uh, what I was uh, striving for when I started my life. So uh, <laughs> I was looking to see what I could do, what I could, uh, what I what I could do differently. And uh, marketing and sales sounded like a great uh, idea at that time. So um, the opportunity showed up and uh, I was able to, to transition then from um, the accountancy uh, job into to marketing. One day I just decided, okay, I will call off my, all my friends and I will say, who wants who want some customers? So <laughs> I called a couple of friends which had... Uh, uh, a little accountancy uh, companies as well. And um, so I distributed my uh, my contracts around. <laughs> so here I was free for another beginning. Um, well, after some years of doing uh, marketing and um, well, it was also quality management because at that time uh, uh, the quality management uh, was just ramping up and uh, nobody wanted to do that job. So. The last uh, came in uh, into the company. They also got a bonus uh, activities <laughs> implementing the ISO standards. Um, but that was a really good, uh, really good uh, part um, of the journey because even now I make reference to that period and I'm using a lot of the information I got at that time. And um, a few years down the line, I decided to change cities. And with the, my husband at the time, we decided to create a small company in um, uh, delivering uh, services for um, repair shop, car repair shop. So we had uh, like auto parts, um, small company, which we developed for a few years. And then, um, yeah, things didn't ramp up very well, uh, also because of the, the crisis at that time and uh, probably our our skills in a new city uh, did not help much in the situation. And then I looked into um, having again another career into, into a corporate environment, into a corporate environment this time. And um, well, since then I'm still in a corporate environment doing a lot of type of programs and roles and um, things are just growing and growing since then now. I'm a director in, um, in a large company uh, covering um, um, with my role a lot of uh, European uh, countries. Um, so yeah, I'm quite happy. <laughs> I'm quite happy with uh, the, the, the current job that I, that I have. Last time we spoke and uh, we prepared a bit this, uh, this discussion, you also told me that Every three, four years, you feel the need, or even earlier sometimes, to change and do something different. 
how is that manifesting right now? Because before you yeah. moved from one uh, function to another, one city to another, but now you've been stable for quite some time in the same city and with the same company. So how is this change need manifesting itself right now? Well, I do have, uh, I noticed that in my life, I'm, it's moving around in patterns over three years and seven years. Uh, once three years, uh, I do feel the need to, to change or to explore various uh, parts of maybe myself, which I had uh, outstanding desires to, to pursue or a little dreams to pursue. And uh, once in seven years, I noticed that there are like the bigger cycles, the bigger waves uh, coming. <laughs> Um, so yes, a few years ago, um, actually four years ago, because now, uh, the three year, uh, cycle ended, <laughs> I uh, decided that I need a new, I need, I need to, to, to do some sports, um, also to take care of my health and to, to really grow and uh, keeping myself in shape. So, um, well, I explored going to gym, but uh, really, I cannot go to gym. I, my, I'm not the type of person that can go to gym regularly. I just don't like the uh, the setup and um, yeah, the the sports there. So I was looking really. I was looking intensively for um, what I could do because um, growing up, uh, I was involved a lot of. I mean, um, I was doing sports quite often, and I was part of the handball um, city team um, that I was growing up in. And um, I really missed that um, team interaction and sports um, sports environment. But gym could not provide that, and um, it's not something that could keep me motivated to to, to work out. So I was looking for, for something to, to challenge me and to bring me new horizons, but um, nothing came up. Uh, one day I was having a discussion with uh, one of my friends in, uh, in Zagreb, and she said, oh, I discovered and found out something really cool that you should uh, probably um, be interested in. And uh, she said, well, I started to do pole, uh, pole fitness. And I said, say what? Seriously, I want to do this. I mean, seriously, I have to try it out. And uh, uh, <clears throat> how, I, how come? Because it's not a team sport. Yes, right? it's, it's, yes, it's true. It's not a team sport, but um, the community I found um, there, it's almost like a team. Um, the, the girls that I discovered uh, doing these sports, they are really almost like a family. Um, uh, it's a very nice, uh, supportive uh, community and uh, we always share and uh, we have a lot of uh, time together and uh, we share in the pain and the laughter because uh, it's, it's a sport that uh, you do suffer a lot. <laughs> um, through the frustration of uh, trying things out and uh, they are not uh, always um, turning out in the way you are uh, expecting it to, to, to turn out. You're learning new elements and um, sometimes it can take uh, weeks or months to, to learn new, new elements. So um, the, the community of girls that I discovered there um, is quite 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 healthy and quite uh, it was quite good for for me and uh, at that stage. So I said, yeah, and I'm going to do this, and I want to compete. I want to go to to competitions. Um, so after just a couple of months after I started uh, doing the sports, I went to to see a first competition live. I went to to Barcelona. Um, a lot of the girls that I started to know, they were competing. I was the only one uh, not competing, but I wanted to be there and to, to see how a competition is happening, what is the vibe, how, what is the process, what you need to do, what you need to know, and uh, the, all of this to assess how I could potentially be <laughs> in, uh, in this environment. So. Um, it was quite a journey, but uh, I think the most interesting part, it was that when first I decided, yes, I want to do this, um, there was actually no opportunity um, to learn. So it took probably more than one year of um, researching and um, 
calling various studios. I only found studios in uh, in Bucharest. Well, I live in Cluj at the moment. Um, and I was keep asking them once in a few months, hey, how are you? Do you want to open a studio in Cluj? No, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'll, call, I'll call back later <laughs> if you change your mind. <laughs> um, but uh, I was doing... Um, a little project with one of my friends and she knew about uh, my desire to find somebody that would teach me pole. And uh, she said, well, I, I know a lady that she has a pole in her home and uh, she sometimes uh, also teaches. So I said, yes, <laughs> that's exactly what I wanted. So I contacted uh, uh, the lady and uh, well, the next week I was already in her living room with all her kids around and we started, uh, started the practice. That's how it all started. I think this is all very fascinating. But I'm really curious because you said that every three to seven years, it's a, it's a small cycle and then a long cycle for change. What drives this change? What's the reason behind it? I, how I notice that uh, what is happening for me in those three, three year cycles um, is that I notice that whatever objectives I want to accomplish, then I... I need to give three years for something to unfold and to grow uh, into my life. Um, and actually this, I, I didn't really realize that I'm doing this until I went through this uh, whole, um, whole little journey of my life because then I started to, to measure and look at the cycles. And this was the first time that I had a reflection. And then looking back, I realized that Yes, my life evolves around three years from the moment I set the intention and I start doing something until the moment I see the actually the results of uh, of, of the work that I'm uh, putting it in, into it. And um, when I started doing the poll, I said, uh, "Well, yes, Odika, you will do you will do this, but you're not allowed to quit earlier than six months, um, so you can give it a fair chance." So then, this was after this moment. Um, Six months was like a pattern for me to, to say, okay, I'm starting this, but I'm not quitting it in earlier than six months. Um, uh, just to see how things are evolving, growing, if I like it or not. Because in the beginning of starting something new, there's a lot of pain, pain of change, pain of uh, growing, pain of... Learning, being, not knowing. Not knowing, being frustrated that nothing gets coming out the way you want. You feel like nothing is turning out good. <laughs> so then um, I started to give myself this time frame of six months to, to decide uh, what I'm going to do with this, um, with this little project or with this new endeavor that I want to do. So um, yes, that's how I realized that uh, I have, um, it's happening in my life these three years um, pattern that, I get to the point of seeing something really happening and really seeing the results in three years after I start uh, working on it. Um, I really admire people that have results faster. <laughs> I consider myself from these regards a very slow learner. So, uh, um, yeah. It's I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how to, what to say about this because I think in the end you achieve what you set your mind to. And I don't think anyone get can get to an expertise kind of level earlier than two or three years. I, I accept if this is really something related to what you've done. So you're building on other skills and not learning from scratch. Because if you're learning from scratch, you need to give yourself a little time to 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 be good at what you're doing. Yes. Yeah. Yes, it's true. You need to give yourself time and uh, having patience and grace with yourself uh, because it's very hard. I mean, it's very easy to judge the level that you've reached, especially when you are comparing yourself with others around you. And in this uh, current climate with everything and everybody online, it's easy to just draw conclusions that, uh, well, I'm not that good or um, they are way better or what can I do to, to compensate those um, those skills that I may be needing to, to, to catch up. Sometimes you can feel that pressure, but uh, I think it's very important in this uh, race and uh, walk with yourself to, to know yourself and to 
just pace it at the um, the level you are ready to, to to go to. Of course, sometimes pushing yourself is very needed, and I do that quite often, uh, throwing myself into deep water and here. Let's see how you swim this time. <laughs> Does it get easier with time to first choose what you want to do a different a different endeavor? And does it get easier to, I don't know, give yourself a break, to learn, um, reflect on what you're doing? Does it get easier with time or is it just as frustrating and painful every single time? In some ways, it gets easier because you understand yourself better um, and understand and you can accept, uh, for example, your learning style. And everybody has a way and a method on the preferred style they, they learn. And for example, in my case, I know that in order to get something done really well, I need to repeat it many, 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 many times um, in order to, to get to the level of, let's say, um, desired outcome. If I compare to myself to others, for example, at the gym or at the class, it's like, seriously, how come did you do that fast? But, uh, well, accepting my style and my, uh, my way of growing, uh, then um, this part, it gets a bit more easier, but it doesn't get easier the part that you still have to push yourself and you still need to find the motivation and uh, uh, you need to, to explore your, your limits so that it's all, also always is going to be there, the, the growing pains, I think, no matter... No matter what, but uh, what it gets easier is that you know that uh, you have confidence in yourself and in your uh, skills that you've done it before and you will do it again. And it's just a matter of time. And uh, when you need rest, you just give it a break and try to, to do something else. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a process that we are uh, subscribing uh, <laughs> into when we are uh, coming into this, uh, this world to and especially if you want to make a difference and to, you want to, um, first of all, to, to know who you can be and um, then becoming the person that you, you know you can, you can be. Which was the most uh, frustrating and difficult uh, change out of the four or five that you've already made? Accounting to marketing, then changing cities, opening, uh, what was it, a repair shop? then moving to corporate, then taking this wonderful competition, poll competition endeavor. Which one was the, diffi- the, the most difficult one? Mm. I would say that each one of them had a different, uh, different challenges um, attached to it. Um, now I could probably make reference to, to the, the poll one because it's most, the most recent one. Um, because on top of the, the the growing pains that I had to to go through, also physical, pain, but also with the frustration and uh, the learning, um, it was also um, the social um, environment, um, you know, labeling or not understanding what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, or what is this all about? Because uh, we all know the stigma of uh, of oh, dancing. All fitness can carry. So it was tricky sometimes to, to, to talk about uh, my, 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 my passion and my hobby, or I'm just going to skip it altogether uh, just to avoid the discussion of uh, so uh, what are you doing you know, after, after 9 p.m. or after 10 p.m.? <laughs> uh, everybody's expecting that uh, there's something in the background of, um, of the stories. You're not doing this just for the for the pleasure of, um, of just doing sports or fitness, uh, or in also the pleasure of uh, being with a with a community of uh, new friends that you just um, just discovered. So probably that was uh, a, a, let's say a tricky part which I didn't have to go through in the other uh, change processes. So this was um, a new um, side of change. Um, that I did, I anticipated, but it, you know, you want to anticipate it and then want to, to go through it. Uh, how- <laughs> did you, did you receive any discouraging remarks? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, of course. 
it's all yeah I mean, started to with the, the family or the friends that uh, you expect that they will know you and they will know already the, who you are. Then they would just fully support you, but uh, it's not uh, it's not always the case. That, uh, so, so what kept you focused? What kept you still move forward and and do attend the competition? Uh, the um, the really strong desire and uh, the the passion that I dis- I discovered, you know that uh, there is um, also that uh, research that that it's referring to the core human needs we have. So um, they are according to some they have, probably there are lots of studies around. But uh, as soon as um, you find something that uh, incorporates at least half of and supports half of your core human needs then you kind of stick with it because it really gives you a lot of uh, personal satisfaction and personal uh, uh, growth out of that. So um, for me, Paul satisfied uh, more than uh, half of my uh, my core needs. So it was easy easy to, to, to stick with uh, to the process because I was, I was growing, I was receiving um, the environment, the community, I was receiving the... Um, the motivation, the growth challenges uh, that I needed to 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 to, to just do it. I stick with it. Um, so I think this would be one of the uh, the things that I would encourage you know, people to the listeners to to explore it, just to see their uh, what are the core needs and what resonates uh, to to the core needs. And uh, there are a lot of materials out there. I will not make recommendations or who to listen and what to do, but uh, I realized that um, just following who you are, your inner structure and applying yourself to the structure through the things you design and you bring it to your life, then um, that gives you uh, longer endurance uh, and a longer uh, chance to to be successful and to, and to, to stick with the process. Because I, uh, the gym, I was always making fun with know, the, the, the younger ladies. And, uh, <laughs> well, I'm not uh, necessarily the, the youngest age to, to start with in this sport. And there are a lot of very talented uh, girls out there, which I admire a lot. And I will, I will always tell them, well, you may have the talent, but I have the endurance. So let's see. Who's gonna <laughs> That's why it's an exotic uh, kind of change and, and, and transition that you made or, or choice uh, to do this uh, all uh, fitness at this age. <laughs> Are you okay yes. to share your age? Yes, I'm 41 now. Many happy anniversaries. Thank you. I asked you which was the most difficult of the changes, but I also want to ask you which was the one where you had the most fun? Most fun. I think um, the most fun it's when I uh, find something that uh, appeals to my creative side uh, and to the side that um, this part of mine, um, because I was talking about my core needs and uh, exploration and um, innovation and creativity, it's really out there for me. Very, they are really high on the on the need to. I'm chasing and I'm looking to to, to fulfill through what I do. So um, just. Just designing and developing uh, like the business plans and uh, creating a little strategy around the the projects that I had. I think that's where I had uh, the most fun. And you see the the juices flowing and uh, <laughs> you have the flow and uh, you're feeling energized and you're feeling uh, um, that you're like invincible sometimes uh, when you when you're in that state. So. Yes, I think um, coming up with um, strategies or coming up with ideas and finding ways to to accomplish or to, to bring that, those ideas into reality, but that's what I have uh, uh, the most fun. When you when you started from accounting and moved to marketing and sales, then you moved uh, again and had your own uh, company, an auto company. Then you moved to co- corporate and uh, did strategy. All of these were were different changes. Were you a junior whenever you started again? Yes, I was a junior a lot of the times. Uh, every, most of the times when I did a change, I had to go back to basics and learn uh, 
learn um, not necessarily all the time new skills, but uh, the new uh, industry or the new um, environment. Because it, I think, in order to be successful or to to really um, to say that uh, you can grow into into a certain area, you need to learn the environment and you need to learn how things work and uh, what would be the best approach in uh, in various situations. And some strategies work good in some scenarios and the other don't. So just applying yourself really quickly to, to the environment, I think this is um, what uh, um, accommodated the, the, the changes that I had to do in, um, in those scenarios. Just being flexible and understanding people uh, and trying to get a step back and uh, to really be a learner. I think it's very hard to be the learner um, because we, as we have some experiences, we always think, oh, people are just, I know already everything about people. And like he's exactly like she. So it's, it's no point to, to try to understand. And you're coming up quickly with um, assumptions, um, how things should work. So, um, yes, I think this is another uh, um, skill uh, that, in a change, it's quite needed to just to be a kid again, just to to assume that you don't know anything and to um, learn from scratch about the people uh, they are around you, about the, the environment, about that industry, and then well, of course, you need to formulate quickly your assumptions. Uh, you don't have that much time, especially in the high positions job that you need to deliver. But um, in the discussions with your people, in the discussions with people around you. Just come up with an attitude, attitude of I'm here to, to learn from you and I'm here to, to also support you. I think one of my um, early in the uh, early in my professional uh, life, I was very, very, very blessed to find some people that I really admired as leaders and as visionaries. And um, I grew a lot uh, and I learned a lot uh, from uh, observing them. Uh, because normally you don't learn through what they tell you, you learn from observing. So um, they told me um, many years ago that, well, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. So this uh, stuck with me um, forever. But now uh, I want to make sure first that the people know that I care about them and I care about what's going on. Um, then imposing my objectives from the first moment. Um, this, this is a really nice uh, saying. It's uh, it can stick with you definitely. Yes. But, and it, oh, go ahead. It's very powerful when it's demonstrated. Mm -hmm. uh, you really feel that the people around you they really care about you, and then. Of course, we do have a, com a common objective and a mission and we are going to just accomplish and we're going to go to do, do those stuff. But it's one to be in a team with a person that you know that they care about you and they will have your back and then you can uh, give your best and you can uh, pass any limit you may encounter or just to be in an environment that uh, you just, you think, I mean, no, it's not only thinking, it's like maybe visible that that person, they just want to get things done fast and quickly and where you are and whatever is going on in your life is uh, secondary. Um, so this is... Uh, it's always good to have the support. Did this help you get past, uh, I don't know, uh, some, what, most of the people that I talk with that, start, that are juniors, whenever they start a new job, uh, they have this this moment. They have some moments where they don't understand what their skill is anymore, and uh, they they question their self esteem. Right? They, it's it's not where they should be. They question their knowledge. That they question if they're good enough. They bounce back, of course, because they make the changes. So my question is, what makes you bounce back, or if you ever have this kind of feelings? Because if you're forever a junior, you might never feel that hey, I, I'm actually good at something. Yes, I think what helps me personally bounce back, it's this approach of when I have these moments that I don't know what, 
you know, there, there's big changes or they're like, I need a bit of time to comply myself with, uh, with the change and uh, absorb, absorb what my role should be into, into any specific scenario. And then my first go-to um, attitude would be, well, I'm here to serve you. So um, just, I, mean, I subscribe to the vision, I subscribe to where we're going. So I'm here to, to serve you, and um, that will give me a bit of uh, time to, to, to rest and to prove myself. Um, as being a very, very achieve, high achiever and uh, <laughs> driven person, uh, it was not easy to, to sometimes give myself this little moment of, um, of break and uh, to accept that you have moments when you need to, to regroup and reconsider um, what you're doing and where you're going. But in that time, it's very important not to drop the time mm-hmm. because you're there and um, you subscribe to, I mean, for our generation at least, it, it was very important, the commitment. And uh, this is also what um, uh, helped me go through the situation. Okay, Radhika, you said this and you're going to do this. <laughs> How important is that for you? That if you promise something to yourself or to someone else, that you get it done? Yes, it's very important. Um, because I think this is also a factor that erodes your confidence. Uh, because to myself, um, that we are going to do this, I'm going to do this, and then I'm not going to do it. Well, maybe one time or two times or three times, nothing will happen. But uh, having a pattern or repeated behavior in this one, uh, a lot of things can happen. And it's not good things. Uh, it's just um, a process of um, sabotage, sabotaging my own confidence and my own uh, uh, stability and uh, balance. Uh, and then it's very hard to, and a bigger, let's say, a bigger challenge rises up, then you don't believe yourself. Okay, so today I say, okay, I will quit, quit on sugar, but <laughs> this is a battle I still have ongoing, and I talked to myself this morning about it. <laughs> and then I, I find myself at the bakery shop buying some cookies. Uh, <laughs> but So I don't have much confidence in me in uh, deciding to quit on sugar, but I do have confidence in myself in the areas where I practiced uh, commitment. So in the areas where I practice commitment, um, you, you grow and you know that you can rely on yourself and you know that you can rely on uh, um, the ability to, to move forward and to, to overcome it and to be, um, to be a victorious, um, to be victorious in a certain project. area of your choosing a project. Yes. Do, you, do you make plans when you, when you make these changes? Do you plan anything ahead or you are just flexible as things go? How does it work? I like to really be very planned. Mm-hmm. Um, in the beginning of a, of a new process, I say, okay, in two weeks, I will do this. In three months, I will do that. Uh, it's just that it doesn't always uh, match with the, your planning. And um, it's also good to be flexible and to accommodate. This is uh, another area that I had to, to really learn in the hard way. Because because I really like to be committed and I like to be just focused and um, do whatever I said I will do, then not be able to achieve uh, those little milestones or little targets, would, I would really struggle and be, be frustrated um, at times. So I need, I need to learn to, to say, okay, why I didn't accomplish? Was it too, it was irrealistic, uh, my objective or their factors that um, that just happened that I didn't uh, foresee. Uh, just to analyze the situation and to try to rephrase it and grant myself another deadline uh, um, in case um, I would need that. So flexibility is really important, especially in learning a new skill because you don't know how you will react. Um, in a situation that uh, you, you're relying on your, you know, your muscles already formed, then it's easier to, to predict. Uh, how things will be and if you were already in uh, that situation then you know probably it will take me like 10 minutes to get to the to the bakery shop um, then you know that but in a situation that you need to learn a new a new skill you can also surprise yourself <laughs> uh, <laughs> good or bad yes good or bad how how it, so then i would suggest the flexibility um, but 
I think if you would ask me a huge lesson what I learned um, after the after after the competition and after you know just going through this um, very intensive uh, training and so um, you know after I competed and after I I I done what I said I would do I really reflected and I was thinking. Um, what I would do differently uh, if I would start all over again. And uh, I would say that if you want to kill a giant, then train with a giant killer. Um, that would be something that is really, really important because there's no no, no sh- shortcuts to, to this, uh, to, the, to the process. I mean, if you like cheating the codes in the beginning that maybe you see, you think that you're gonna have like a shorter training or I'm not going to buy just that expensive equipment because uh, that one will go. Um, you really need to think where you want to go and then get the proper tools, get the proper coaching and get the proper things in line to, to, to get you there, to support in the process. Because, uh, you know, training in, on a kid's pole and uh, having uh, bad nutrition and uh, training once a week and exposing yourself to injuries will never going to get you um, to a situation to to win any championships, so I would yeah this is a um, something that uh, it's not to be sacrificed when you have a high objective and desire. Just make sure that you have uh, I that I I have the best coaches possible. I have the best tools possible. I have the best everything possible um, to make it happen. When I when I'm when I'm training or when I'm doing something because it will catch up with me anyhow. Mm-hmm. At some point, <laughs> there's no I learned there's no shortcut. <laughs> uh, I never I never asked you uh, what was the result of the competition. You only attended one or multiple? Well, last year it was the first competition in Romania. Um, so yeah, I was uh, the first in my uh, my group in the, um, the amateur uh, category. Yes. Were you happy with the result? Yes, I was happy after two days. <laughs> In the first two days, I was like, oh no, why did I do this? <laughs> Remind me again, everything was hurting and uh, I was just having flashes of all the things that, uh, that didn't go according to, to, to my exercise. Uh, it, it really had a... Uh, um, Big impact, you know. I was really happy with the celebration, but I uh, with 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 the, with the result. But also, I was still thinking of that could have been even more perfect. <laughs> how many how many contestants were you at uh, your category? I don't know. Was it an age category or a weight category? Yes, uh, there there was. Uh, it's it's age, yeah, it's age yeah. Mm-hmm. related. Yeah, so we were a few of us. <laughs> So what's next for you? In Romania, yeah. What's what's next for you? Because this is forty years, right? Are you going to attend yes. another competition? Are you going to change uh, this exotic endeavor with a new one? I decided that I will uh, keep uh, keep it to to hobby level, uh, also because I had um, some injuries um, as a result of it, and um, um, I just consider I reach my objective, so I'm just going to enjoy uh, doing sports uh, as, a, as a regular sport. Uh, right now, I'm exploring to um, I start to, to to learn a new skill in the in the finance area. So I'm investing a bit more time in uh, financing uh, trading. Trading, okay. That uh, your background in accounting should help a bit, at least with the terms yeah. and the lingo, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, it helps, but uh, it's more the ability to to forecast and to look at trends and to make decisions uh, uh, according to that uh, more than uh, more than accounting. Um, so exotic. Yes, I'm. I'm. I'm curious. Maybe. Maybe you can teach me something about it uh, as well, because I started to just look at it. Uh, all, all of my friends whether they are doctors or whether they work in recruitment, everyone is doing trading. I'm like, I, I don't, I don't know. It seems hard. It seems like uh, you are the small players playing with the big, uh, the big guys with the big guns. Yeah. And I, for me, it feels like there's no chance that I'm going to win at this game. Uh, especially that you're fighting against the bots and the automated systems. You as a one person who doesn't know enough and doesn't have enough time. 
but maybe there's a there's some uh, there are some lessons there so i'm looking forward at some point when you feel um Good enough, let me know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, those are six months of uh, going through the process. <laughs> uh, just now, I'm going to complete uh, soon uh, my six months of um, uh, commitment to myself to stick with the process. And um, yes, we can uh, we can talk about this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm uh, definitely curious to, to hear more about it and learn some more from you. Is there something, Rodika, that I didn't ask you about the changes that you've been through and how they have how they felt, how they manifested, the kind of uh, things you've learned and you would like to share with uh, with everyone. I think I probably covered uh, what I had uh, in my mind uh, at the moment, but I think the most important part for me it's to it was and it is still to to know myself. Because as you said, I mean, it's just me, a little player here, how I'm going to make some money. But um, it's me, the little player here in this environment. Actually, how am I going to make the money? Because it's uh, that there is um, possibility and there is a way and there is a method. So that's kind of the self-discovery process of what fits me, what doesn't fit me. Um, it's a lot of trial and error. I mean, I go for trial and error. And, um, I hope it's less error, but uh, <laughs> and that, that is part of the process. And um, yeah, just... And being true to, to to yourself, not to not, not to lie to yourself, because that's not paying off, um, not even one single time. Uh, so just acknowledging, um, having real discussions um, with, with yourself about what you're going through and what you want to do, and find the resources in you to to accomplish that. Or um, that kind of helped me knowing myself more and more, and. Uh, Probably finding a new romance, you know, with you, with yourself. Everybody's talking about now how important it is to, to, to really be loving to, to yourself. And um, uh, I discovered this, uh, this as well. It's really important and it's really um, another kind of a journey if you want to talk about uh, or if you want to go that way. Uh, true, true it is. And what uh, what I will uh, get out from here is the practice of commitment because I think that throughout your journey there are lessons to learn from me and for the for me and for the others on how to practice this commitment and how to give yourself space and slack and to give yourself time to to get through what mm -hmm. you're doing. And I really love the train with the giants uh, motto. I think that's good. If you want to be a giant, you have to train with the giants. Yeah, I, I, um, there's no. I mean, I didn't find any other. I mean, I didn't find a shortcut because in the yeah. end, you have to bridge the gap. Um, so you bridge the gap in a shorter period, or you bridge the gap in a longer period. It's up to the decisions you make in the beginning. The, yeah. The, yeah. Rudika, thank you very much for your time today, and thank you for the wonderful story. Thank you very much, Julia. And uh, thank you to all the listeners that had patience to, to hear my story and hope that uh, there are some maybe inspirational words or wisdom that you could uh, take for today. Thank you.